Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to Thursday Live Lessons here on ukuleleontheground.com. My name is Aldrin Guerrero. I'm joined by Mr. Aaron, the voice now commercial. Say, what's up, Aaron? What's up? And by Kahai, the legend Fergan. Say, what's up, Kahai? What's up? So sorry uh, that we starting a little bit late. We're like about five minutes late. Uh, we had a little bit of technical issues, but it's all fixed now. And I uh, hope things run smoothly. But welcome to Thursday Live Lessons, where we answer any and all of your questions. So kind of consider this as like like a, like a town hall meeting. Like you know, let us know what uh, you know what kind of um, kind of walls have you hit, kind of hurdles are you hitting right now with your uh, with your ukulele journey. Uh, we can all talk about it. Uh, myself, Aaron, and Kahai are here to help you out. So. Any questions in the form of emails or messages or anything like that? We also have a live chat because we are live. This is Thursday live lessons. You can ask them. Uh, you can ask them to us, and we'll try to answer them as best as we can. We're gonna collectively put our brains together and come up with the best answer possible for you. And if not, then you we can just have some good discussion about ukulele or just uh, about life in general. And uh, we want to say thank you so much for those of you watching because that means you signed up for UU Plus, and we appreciate that. Um, if you're not signed up for UU Plus, what are you waiting for? Sign up for UU Plus to take your ukulele playing to the next level. Uh, we want to say shout out and hello to all of our listeners via the podcast and. And if you uh, if you want to watch this live, head over to ukuleleontheground.com. Set up for UU Plus. And if you're a UU Plus member, if you want to download this uh, as an audio, you can take it with you in the car for your commute or something. Is what I do when I do with podcasts and stuff. I have a long drive from my house over to the Ukulele on the Ground HQ. Uh, I put on a podcast, and uh, you know I just kind of inter- I don't really listen to music anymore in the car. Do you guys listen to music still? Yeah, it's hard. It's tough. <laughs> I don't know why. Like I may, might have grown out of it. I think like I'm getting to that old man status of like I just want to hear people talk about stuff. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just want to listen to my audio books. I just want to listen to my audio books. You know, like not with not not with the music. Back then, I'd be like you know blast newfound glory. Like it's all downhill from here. <laughs> like I would just cry in my car and have a good emo cry in my yeah. car. But like now, it's like with, no. <laughs> with your hair over one eye, <laughs> hair over one eye, a little emo kid self. You know, back then I used to listen to a lot of uh, a lot of music. But now it's like I still you know, listen to emo. <laughs> <laughs> now in my ascot, in my uh, <clears throat> my corn cob pipe, I'd rather listen to some intellectual conversations. <laughs> like. I want to listen to NPR. You have any great pawn. <laughs> I'd rather. <laughs> but uh, let's get started. So that's how it works. Uh, Kahai, he will um, he will tell me all the questions that we received. Uh, Aaron and you know Aaron is uh, watching the live chat right now. So if you guys have questions on that, um, Kahai is also in the chat. So anything that you guys type on the chat, they will both see, and they will uh, hand it off to me like a baton in a race, uh, and I will try to answer them to my best abilities. The three of us will talk about it. Okay, here we go. Uh, we just got a question in the chat from okay. Renee, and she yeah. asked, Renee. how do we introduce dynamics into our playing? Mm. <clears throat> um, how do you introduce dynamics to your playing? Um, for for starters, uh, I always tell people like um, to to find your range, to find your you know the lowest range and find the highest range. Uh, what that means is you know the softest and the loudest of your of your dynamic range. So if this is the loudest that you can play, sorry for the for the microphones. And if this is the softest you can play, you want to find the middle ground of that because that's where you want to start. Uh, if we're talking music, um, you want to figure out where uh, pianissimo is or PP or PPP or whatever. And then you want to find where fortissimo is, which is FFF or what, what, whatever the loud. I don't know. It was like yeah, five yeah. Fs. You can have five Fs if you musical want. Musical notation. Like, yeah, musical yeah. notation. So piano to forte. You want to find mezzo forte, which is right smack dab in the middle so that you know that you can get louder and you can also get softer. So most people get the, uh, you know, make the mistake of uh, of playing at forte. So forte, you only have, really have like, you know, a little bit. So here's here's the... The, the graph that I use, this air graph that I use. For, sorry for those of you audio listeners. So this is my air graph. I'm making a little graph with my hands right now. Explain what I'm doing, Aaron, to, to the listeners. You, you have great... Holding uh, one hand uh, up and one <laughs> hand down. Okay, yeah, exactly. Now, <laughs> you, you, so this is your dynamic range. This is uh, pianissimo. This is fortissimo right here. You want to figure out mezzo forte, which is right here. What am I doing now? Okay. Sort of somewhere in the middle, <laughs> up and down. <laughs> and then the green hornet came in. And <laughs> this is like, it's like like story radio or whatever they call it. <laughs> so uh, you want to find where mezzo forte is. 
Because um, what that means is you can get this much softer, you know, and you can get this much louder. So if you if this is your dynamic range and you start right here, and this is the only kind of change loud that you can you know you can make. You want to go like right here so you can have a, a, a bigger and wider dynamic range. Now, how do you start introducing that to your songs? Like I said, once you figure out what mezzo forte is, um, you know you want to figure out what mezzo forte is. And once you got that down. Uh, you want to start playing at that, you know, at that, uh, that volume. Now, uh, you know, you want to analyze your song. Are there parts where you're able to add some dynamics in there? So, for example, if I'm playing this, uh, I'm playing drop, baby drop, or something. You know, let's just use that as, as an example. I'm at mezzo forte, and then I want to go. <clears throat> you know, um, I'm I'm singing a song. My heart does the tango with every little move you make. And then go, like a mango, wish we could make it every day. I want you to drop, baby, drop. You know, like during the chorus, you might want to, you know, like uh, pick it up maybe uh, a little bit. So from mezzo forte to, to just forte, not exactly fortissimo. You don't want to break people's ears and stuff, but at least you, you know, you increase a little bit. If there's a uh, there's a part that you think, you know, uh, maybe at the end, you know, if you're doing drop, baby, drop, baby, drop. Here's the ending. Drop, cause I'm hungry. Drop, baby, drop, baby, drop. Drop all your love on me. If you want to get to like a fortissimo there, you have the, uh, you know, you have the ability to do so. Um, as far as going to piano, you know, maybe not with, not with that song, but if you got a song like, um, like Wonderful Tonight by Eric Clapton or something that you're, you know, you're going maybe piano at first and go up to mezzo forte. And then uh, during the bridge, you can go to a, uh, to a regular forte. So you can do... It's late in the evening. And then once you get to the chorus... Because I see the love light. So that when you get back to the, uh, to the verse... to that that piano there's like it's a it's a big change you know it's a big change in like so this is the uh, this is the chorus or whatever however you want to call that you know that part big and dynamic so that when you get uh when you're when you're done with that big dynamic part you can always go down to a mezzo piano maybe not necessarily piano maybe a mezzo piano where you're just like you know uh, the audience hears the discernible difference between that part and the next it just depends on the song, you know. You want to analyze the uh, analyze the song where, okay, you know, on this part maybe I can, uh, you know, I can do, I can be a little bit softer. This part I can be a little bit louder. Um, you know, ukulele uh, compositions like "While My Guitar Gently Weeps," you know, that's a great example of a very, very, very dynamic song because in the beginning he's like, you know, very like uh, mezzo piano. But then the next, like, you know, uh, after the, the chorus. During the chorus, he's already kind of, you know, like, wrapping it up a little bit. And then when, uh, when the verse comes back on. That's like a nice mezzo forte. Then it just gets louder and louder. And then that part, he goes. That part is like fortissimo. He really, really, really gets into it. And then um, uh, he does a... Bring it back He's down. bringing it back down. And then back to which is mezzo, uh, mezzo piano. So all these things will make a big difference in uh, in phrasing and the way that your song feels and the way that the audience perceives your song. So those are you know ways to kind of introduce dynamics. So in uh, you know from from the beginning. Figure out where those are with your instrument because it's going to be different, you know, from uh, one instrument to the other. So once mm -hmm. you figure it out for your own instruments, then you'll kind of know what, you know, what type of attack to do, like how loud you're going to, you know, how loud you're going to do it. Because getting to know your instrument, that's like, that's number one. And once you figure that out, you can start a mezzo forte and go from there. Yeah. And then it would make sense for each 
piece that you're playing too, mm-hmm. right? There's a yeah. mez- mezzo forte for that song. Yes, really. yes, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Also, yeah, because um, some songs might go louder than than you know than others. Some yeah. songs might go yeah. softer. So you would want to start yeah. in the middle mm-hmm. of the mm-hmm. dynamic range of the song. Yeah. So, yeah, kind of just things to think about. I would yeah, say if you're yeah. if you're really really want to get into this, um, observe other players. Mm-hmm. Like you know. With YouTube, you can watch it. A bunch of people playing the same song, you know, differently. Yeah, watch the right person then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. but mm-hmm. I mean, there are takeaways from people who are playing it terribly too. That's true. Know? That's true. It's like stuff not to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Things so. not to do. Dynamics is one of those things that it's like mm-hmm. in the details that mm-hmm. just like makes a song so much better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it really does take extra mm-hmm. care and thought. Yeah. yeah. So, so it. just kind of, mm-hmm. kind of being aware. Uh, and kind of observing other people and mm-hmm. how they do it, and it could be you know like a guitar player, it mm-hmm. could be somebody because like even Yoda was a- asking about how do you find the dynamic dynamic range of your voice, yeah. Like you know oh, singers, that's be different. Yeah, singers different. do the same thing mm-hmm. where they you know mm-hmm. you you're not gonna <laughs> you're not gonna start off like yeah. just or, wailing yeah. because <laughs> it doesn't. It, if I or like yeah, you should get, stay. You're not. Yeah, you're not gonna. Not. Yes, come on. <laughs> <laughs> going back to going that. back to the same Call back. example. <laughs> you can you can even like apply it to just speaking, right? Because you're not gonna meet somebody for the first time and be yeah. like, "Hi, my name is Kai. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who are yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Like, you don't. If you yeah, think about it the same some way, some medications you're not taking. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah. you you don't want to do the same thing uh-huh. with your ukulele too, right? You don't want to start off yelling yeah, yeah. and and just. Can you like, guys hear this? <laughs> yeah, am I am I loud enough? Can you hear me? It's like no, nah, you, yeah. you know you want to. And when people speak or like when there's professional speakers, they definitely go up and down yeah, with yeah. like the mood or the mm-hmm. feeling of what they're saying. So yeah. think about it the same way. Like go up and down mm-hmm. with what you're trying to say with mm-hmm. your your song. Yeah, so I mean, uh, Renee, you know, a great example, because um, because Renee, you know, he she uh, she attends the Thursday one on one coaching, and she also mm-hmm. does uh, the private lessons and stuff. We we did a, a song by Sam Smith, you know, which is that um, yeah, which is a great example because for that song, it there's a dynamic uh, dynamic change just in that phrase alone. Uh-huh. So when you do that. Yeah. So when the multiple like, strings kind of yeah, come when, in, and that's when it gets louder, and then it goes be, yeah. right back down to the, then back. Yeah. You can like you can hear how like Sam Smith does it too, right? Yeah. Like he brings you in with like just this kind of quiet, mm-hmm, sultry, mm-hmm. and then he hits you with like and oh that strong. I'm crazy. Yeah. 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 Uh, and Renee asks, "Is it too mm-hmm. soon to be trying dynamics?" No, no, definitely, uh, definitely not, because it's uh, it'll help you get to know your instrument. I, I suggest dynamics to people, just even just starting out and stuff. Like, um, you know, in some of the ukulele groups, like whenever I go to like uh, to schools and stuff, and um, you know, do do like a workshop with the kids, I'm always like, oh, you know, like, let's all play it soft, and then let's get loud, and let's get soft. It's like just even fun things like that so they can be like oh i know how to get soft and i know how to get loud i know how to do those things so that like when you kind of put two and two things together like oh this song's supposed to be soft i know how to do just that you know or this song's supposed to be loud i know how to do just that or this song goes from soft to loud to soft to loud i can do just that i think yeah yeah, i think that definitely shows Mm -hmm. growth as a musician right yeah yeah. like knowing how to restrain yourself Mm -hmm. and use Mm -hmm. dynamics appropriately Or even I, I like lately I've been thinking about just the act of learning how to strum. Mm. Um, if you're not using your your thumb, if you're if you're learning how to kind of properly strum with your pointer finger, mm. um, just the the idea of trying to get a consistent sounding mm. strum like that's like a like yeah. like a practice in dynamics because. You're kind of like figuring out the distance that you need to be, and you, you kind of figure the angle out that you hit, yeah the yeah, angle yeah. and everything. And so like you know your downstrum might sound like mm-hmm. a lot louder than your upstrum, or mm-hmm. vice versa. And you, in order to even it out, mm-hmm. you have to play with your dynamics. Yeah. And like just, how much nail to yeah. how much like like flesh ratio. Yeah, like and in order for for it to mm-hmm. feel comfortable mm-hmm. and for it to sound good, so. Mm-hmm. Even from the very beginning, you mm. you have to be yeah, kind of yeah. cognizant of that yeah. dynamic um, range and, and 
kind of yeah so hopefully that answers your question renee um before we move on to the next question i just want to address something real quick mike's not here today <laughs> i know we promised mike <laughs> yeah. last week but i said either next week or the following week uh we heard from the man himself last night he will be here next week so he, he's not here this uh this week i think he's got like uh, like some kind of band rehearsals and stuff with uh, you know, with, with the the middle school kids, and I think they're because it's they're in the middle of like football season, so like, oh, um, yeah, it's kind of crazy oh, because like, like homecoming's gonna yeah, come up really quickly. I, so they we were we be, were talking about that last yeah. night that like you know, um, like there are kids that just got their instruments mm-hmm. and they're and, like and homecoming, yeah, and homecoming's like right there exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so in one month, you're supposed to teach these kids how to play their instruments. How to like you know um, how to march while playing their instruments and it's it's crazy. So I'm like, go do your whatever like uh, band camp that he was talking about that they're uh-huh. doing. So that's what they're doing band camp yeah. so that like they kind of you know like drill these kids. Yeah. Like, you will learn your instrument. Whip whip whip. You know. <laughs> I, I I went to the band camp. Oh, you did with Mike. Yeah. Oh wow. Or that's, like that's how Mike old was. Mike is. Well, no. <laughs> well, were, not with Mike. No, it, it was. I mean, it's not that long ago <laughs> it's high school yeah high school yeah. like band camp mm-hmm. um and he yeah it's mm-hmm. even though i was like playing trumpet for three years it's mm-hmm. hard to learn how to yeah. play and march. and march at the same time and then like you expect these kids who barely like started playing their instruments to like you know to to go and march and stuff it's kind of not fair i i applaud you know mike and his uh and his efforts we, like helping out with yeah. these children and stuff. The, He's kind of like, I mean, Kauai is a small place, but <laughs> Mike is kind of the go-to guy. Yeah, music for, for for anything. Anything all, music. Yeah, music related. Mm-hmm. On he's kind of like the. Yeah, what? so we're kind of <laughs> lucky to like, to like the have Mike restaurant come in. rescuer. Or whatever, like, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For music. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> super nanny, lucky. Nanny nine one one for music on Kauai. <laughs> and he knows it. He knows that he's good, and like, and that's what's great about Mike. Is he comes and helps out. When I was when I started off with marching band, I was really bad at marching. <laughs> and Mike took me and like a couple other kids who were like, "Okay, these kids do not cannot get this." <laughs> took us off to the side, and he had to like you know, it's like, "Okay, we we really gotta break this down, mm-hmm. get you guys good." So that was like, yeah, that that first time I went to band camp, mm-hmm. we stood out in the rain till like eight o'clock at night and just practicing <laughs> marching. That's mm-hmm. like. Yeah. It's got to be some kind yeah, of girl. child laws against that, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. It kind of is. Well, you're not thing. paying them. So. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a, yeah. The labor guy has nothing to they're, do with this. They're here on their own volition. So. <laughs> All right. So that's just to kind of explain a little bit of where Mike is. He will be here next week. He's kind of conducting some band camps right now. And uh, that's that's important. You know, we should let him do that. We should let him have his, have his time with the kids right now. But yeah. So uh, second question. Uh, so... Mark kind of had like a big one in the forum Mm -hmm. and he said that he got a Kamaka and he had it like set up by a professional. But even though he did all of that, he still noticed some intonation problems Mm -hmm. and he he saw like a James Taylor video where I think James Taylor just explained that Mm -hmm. guitar is like a imperfect instrument. So you're Mm -hmm. always going to have like these, these problems or you're going to have these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, well, his question was Mm -hmm. like, um, do uh, I'm just curious if professional ukulele players yeah. will adjust the tuning on their ukulele depending on the type of song they play or where they might play on the fretboard? Um, hmm. that is that's an interesting question. I don't, I don't, and I mean I don't know anybody that does and stuff. That's because we just basically tune to four forty and then like play at four forty. Four forty meaning you know like just right on on the dock like. <clears throat> But well, yeah, but uh, what if you had an instrument that was slightly off? Would you oh, compensate for that? Yes, and I have done that. <laughs> yeah, and you, you do. And um, and if you know, it's good to know where. If you're professional, you should know where. You know, like that. It starts to kind of get sharper or whatever. Because if we're talking like you're tuned here at four forty, but then like once you get up to you know um past up to the twelfth fret, fret or whatever, past yeah. fifth fret, seventh fret, you're going to like four forty three or you know or or even worse sometimes. Um, you should really, you know, you should really know where that that goes, so that like maybe you'll play the fret, you know, the fret behind it, and then just kind of bend it a little bit to get that, you know, to get that right note. I know that's kind of an extreme measure, but that has I have done, you know, stuff like that where, um, I would have to hit the fret before and just kind of do a little bit of pre bend to get it. So, for example, if I was like. 
there where yeah. it's like just kind of like so if if the line was oh maybe even that is I would maybe do a like that so you're just kind of bending the string when you're when you're playing yeah. the they kind of do a pre band note. I know um I know there's uh-huh. been times where we've done we filmed solos and it's not your ukulele but it's your your strings are kind of losing their oh yeah so if it's life. flat or something then mm-hmm. I'll, I'll bend it up a little bit well like and i think you've even like we've done solos and then you know that your strings are like at the end of the yeah. line and so you just tune it like a little bit you know you tune it to make it so like the solo will play flying mm-hmm. but it might be you know it's a little a little off but you're you're tuning it so this, you make sure that we get the solo but then mm-hmm. like for other songs you would have yeah, to tune yeah, it yeah. So, so uh yeah so if it's like flat and stuff like you can compensate for that and i've done that like on on friday live and mm-hmm. stuff like i've done that kind of a lot so if the line once again is yeah, that's a little bit flat you can mm-hmm. hear it So the, yeah, I'll do it. And then I'll, so yeah, that it, it's easier if it's flat than it is if it's sharp. Yeah. If it's sharp, it's kind of tough because you got to go with the fret before that. But if it's a little bit flat, you can always just make like it's um uh, like a vibrato. You can just, you know, pass it off as a vibrato. That's kind of what I do sometimes. Like I just pass it off as if like I meant to do that, you know? And it sounds more expressive or whatever. But um, now going back to, uh, to the original part of your question, um... When you do a setup, even though you're getting it set up by a professional, um, because uh, s- most of the time, this you know this little thing right here is is made out of you know made out of bone. Um, I guess now right now they're using synth- you know, synthetic stuff, but even with synthetic you know material on your saddle, okay, it's going to take a little bit of time for that thing to settle in. So you might have it at four forty, you know. Like very, very much in tune. Like uh, you got it, you know, you got it down. You're like sanding the bottom, doing all the adjustments that you need to adjust on the saddle. You put it back on. Everything sounds great. Uh, the next day still sounds great. Maybe two days later, that, you know, that string is going to settle onto that, um, you know, onto that saddle. And it might go down by like a fraction of a millimeter, you know, on the, uh, um, on the saddle. And that's going to, you know, uh, cause some intonation problems um it it just takes a little while to to settle in just like with strings you know like how strings kind of have to settle same thing with your saddle and any kind of adjustment that you make with the ukulele it might sound good one day and uh, the next day is not going to sound that you know that that great but um that's why i've you know i've been back and forth with uh you know with with my luthier on you know on my ukuleles with like okay um, it's good, and then like uh, maybe a month later or like a couple weeks later, it's like kind of settled in, and it's like ah, oh, it's not you know not doing it like um, not playing in tune, and then you want to you know eliminate the the obvious things like of course I would change my strings first because usually the strings are what's causing the uh, the intonation problems, but in the extreme cases, it's probably my uh, my saddle that has uh, that has kind of um, re you know like readjusted or. Uh, or settled in and it's it's going to affect what the initial setup was so yeah uh even though if it's a professional did that you know they might have they might have gotten it down what i suggest to people is you know is to let it sit for for a few days after you get it you know you get it done and they're like oh it's it's fine it's okay to pick up or whatever don't pick it up that day pick it up maybe three four days after that and then when you go down there on a third or fourth day grab yourself a tuner Check the uh, check the zero fret and then check the twelve fret before you leave because you can't just take you know I I I know and I trust people you know what I mean with with my luthier like I trust them like you know wholeheartedly but I know that you know there are these things that we can't control that like that happen because you know you were working with uh, you're working with wood it's like an organic material you know like it it's going to do things that you don't expect it to do in my you know in, in different humidity in different temperatures all kinds of things you know will uh, will will happen. You- uh, even like uh, playing between different people, yeah, will cause the note to shift differently. Mm-hmm. Like depends on how like you, the amount of pressure that you put on there and how stuff. you're That's attacking true. it yeah. and stuff. So yeah. it it is really like you. I I I've done intonation changes with mm-hmm. my electric guitar, mm-hmm. and I've done it on the table where it's like okay, I'm holding down the twelfth fret on the yeah. table, 
And then when I pick it up and actually play it, I'm like, mm, oh, this is different. not yeah. right. Yeah, I have to do it to how I play. Yeah, there might be a slight like you know shift in your fingers, like you might push, mm, like, and yeah. you don't you don't know that. Or you know, like, like the if you press hard enough, it'll get sharper. Yeah, that's you know? true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, so there's all these things that you know that that can happen as well. So you got to keep those things in mind. Um, so my my advice to anybody who's gonna do that in the future, yes, go get your you know and. I know we didn't mention this before. We should have mentioned this before. Um, yes, get it with done with a professional. You know that's that's step one. Like, don't just let anybody do that because they could make the you know uh, the intonation worse. Um, so always go with a professional. And once you go to a professional, uh, wait. You know, like minimum three four days. You know, if you want to leave it there for a week, even better. If they allow you to do that, then uh, then I would leave it there for a week go in and recheck it again because I'm not going to pay for some, you know, like for a service because that's that's an expensive service. It's not, you know, it's not cheap. You know, if that's maybe 40, 50 bucks, you know, like mm. in some, some people might charge for, for a re-intonation, that's 40, 50 dollars that like if you go home like the following week and it's just, you know, it's just off tune again. I, so Yeah, and he, he said it's a Kamaka too. Yeah. So Kamaka if it, uses bone, I believe. Yeah, it, but if it, it came from Hawaii, mm-hmm. he got it, and then he decided, like, oh, I'm going to go and get it set up right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, that's something that's mm, even that's that, yeah, like, true. when I bring back instruments from the mainland, mm. I wait, like, a week or that's, two weeks yeah, for it to settle in yeah. to the environment yeah. before I, I take it in for setup. Um, When I used to play the open mic over at, over at Ha on Saturdays and stuff, I came home with my uh with my blue gibson like i just mm-hmm. i just got that you know like gibson les paul I'm like oh awesome you know yeah gonna, that's gonna be jamming this that's an electric guitar too, yeah right? electric guitar and it was like this is the worst uh, like, this didn't sound like how, how it did at the store you know <laughs> i'm like i paid so much money for this like why does this not sound good and uh and i even said you know tried to set it up but you know there's going to be a bunch of changes you know uh because i bought it from like riverside in california it was like super you know um uh, mm-hmm. Uh, like a different um, humidity level than it is here, you know, on Kauai and stuff. And uh, I, th- I think I Even was staying in us, Corona at the time. Yeah. It's like desert, so yeah, yeah. It's super dry. And uh, and then back here, where like the humidity levels are like through the roof right now. So it's it's going to change, and there's a lot of factors to it. So don't think that it's you know that it's a poorly constructed uke or whatever. It's just there's these things that happen, you know, and um, you can't really do much about that. Yeah, and I know that the thought is hard or yeah. like it's it's hard because you, you think like I spent this much money yeah. on this instrument. Mm-hmm. It should come like good, right? Mm-hmm. But intonation is just one of those things that is mm-hmm. just so hard to nail down that you. Yeah, it's, it really is like even yeah. when I when I change strings on my electric guitar, mm-hmm. because it's easy. Whenever I change strings on my electric, mm-hmm. I I adjust for intonation. Mm-hmm. Like knowing that this each time the strings change, mm. it's gonna be slightly different. So. Um, may I ask what the uh, uh, did they specify what what the uh, size was? Uh, it because I find um sopranos go more off, uh, not off. I shouldn't say off because it's not off tune. Like, and it is at the same time. So he it's he said tenor. Okay, tenor. Well, his so, his is a tenor, and he actually asked about. Uh, what about super soprano, super concert? Yeah, the tenor? smaller the uh, the the bigger the intonation differences is sometimes because you know it's it's the, shorter, so the, that the shorter scale it length, is. Yeah. yeah, like you know the the more prone it is to um you know to even just have the slight like adjustments. If you like you know if you sort of fret your ukulele a little bit higher, that's going to like you know give it a, a few cents you know sharp or whatever. But yeah, just know that like some of these things do happen like naturally. So I don't know that maybe he fixed the intonation and then you picked it up the next day and you're like oh it sounds great and then like it settled in you're like this doesn't sound like how it did yesterday so those are things that could happen as well it, it's also like you might find bad spots on mm, your your true. instrument yeah. where the intonation is especially bad there mm, and yeah. Where the rest of it is like not too bad. Yeah, yeah. Just, like, just avoid certain, that. Certain, <laughs> yeah, certain frets. <laughs> and, that, and that happens a lot yeah. too. And it's hard. It's usually hard to hear those things if you play like bar chords because mm. you're playing notes right next to whatever the bad spot is. So mm. in theory, like those notes should kind of like stack together where they're all like out of tune but mm. in tune with each other. Yeah. You know. Mm. Yeah. And so that's that's where you might hear like. Why does it sound terrible when I play mm-hmm. this open string next to this ninth fret or something? <laughs> and it's just like it might be a bad spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. So lots, lots of things. I mean, intonation is uh, is something that like kind of we all struggle. I mean, I know um, I get my ukuleles checked up at least like once a year or every other year. Like all my ukuleles, like just to make sure they're all playing okay. Um, you know, I'll change the strings and stuff if they play in tune. I'm like, okay, good. And if they don't, like I send it over right away to be like, okay, well, this is playing, you know, like this many cents sharp or this is playing a little bit flat or whatever. And then they'll come fix it. Um, and and I tell them don't send it to me yet. I I always give them that like that instruction. Of, don't send it to me until after like a week after. Check it again a week after, and you know and uh, and then send it to me if it's still in tune. But that's usually what what I do. I I give it that week grace period to like let it settle in because you know you're putting it up to tension. It's like it's kind of going down on the uh, yeah. you know down on the the, the saddle and it's. And you're you know, slacking it and yeah, taking and it off it and you're trying to right. redo the saddle and mm-hmm. putting it and back. Also, and also, like, if, uh, you know, if if you take off the saddle completely and then, mm-hmm. like, and then you try to put it back in, it's not, like, the same spot. Yeah, so, like, exactly you might spot, have it, yeah. like, just slightly off and then, like, um, you know, it finally settled in so that, like, it's, it, that completely throws everything else off. So, you're, like, you set it, uh, you set it correctly or the, uh, the intonation correctly, but it's not set on the saddle correctly and then it finally does kind of settle in and uh, yeah, that might cause some problems. As well. So <laughs> I, it's it's a, it, it's huge. Yeah. It's very technical. It, yeah, right? it, and it depends too. Like mm. you know, there there is a tolerance that you know mm. you can live with. Right? Yeah, so. yeah. Three two cents is not bad. Two three cents is not bad. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, for for just whatever you know. <laughs> for this <laughs> is, uh, this is like really technical. Uh-huh. But even the way that we tune, mm. it's called equal temperament, mm. and it's made so that everything is kind of in tune with each other <laughs> related like. yeah but then if you actually hear like you know two two notes that mm-hmm. are like far it, like when they play two notes far on the piano mm. those are like 32 cents off mm-hmm. from Not what yet. they should harmonically yeah. be but it's just made so that like when you play chords that are close to each other mm. it's like oh they sound good you know yeah like so it works for most songs but then it's just like yeah man, there is like parts where you kind of have to be like uh, well, we just have to live yeah, with it's it. Basically, <laughs> any any actual acoustic in- instrument is mm-hmm. gonna be, you know, mm-hmm. you know it's yeah. like digital is like the only way to get a perfect note every time. But mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it also takes and away, that, yeah. also <laughs> takes away from yeah. They yeah. they had tuning systems before mm-hmm. where they would tune to specific keys, you know, mm-hmm. and those would be like, oh, it's it's perfect, it sounds great. But mm-hmm. as soon as you like say like, oh. Can we play in the key of B flat? They're like, mm, nope, yeah, can't do yeah, that. No, not that. It wouldn't. Oh, yeah, not that was well, I have to, one step above. Excuse me, I have to grab my other grand piano, <laughs> <laughs> and then they, they can play in B flat. Yeah, it's yeah. So it is, you know, it's a little bit complicated. Uh, I'm sorry that you're having those problems and stuff, but just know that um, they're not uncommon. Yeah, yeah, they're not that common, but they're not uncommon either. So, yeah. So, so would yeah. you say like? Hmm? I guess like five cents would be unacceptable. Yeah, but for me. Like, I mean, three would be like borderline okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's because my my ear hears it, <laughs> uh, and it's yeah, weird and because it, like it kind of depends on the player on your too, ear, yeah, right? on your ear. Yeah, <laughs> just, if you if you can't tell just by listening, yeah. and you the only way that you can tell is by using the tuner mm. that it's off, yeah. then it's still okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm kind of related, you know, like related story to that. My my uh, my wife is not afraid of me okay <laughs> like so <laughs> if if i'm singing even slightly off tune like she will tell me like oh like you're pretty flat or whatever oh, yeah because her mom yeah. is a music yeah, teacher as well she, yeah, she's a singer you know yeah, like, yeah, her yeah. mom has this golden voice that she sounds like I, karen carpenter like she's so good uh-huh. and i'm i'm like a musician like singing like is not you know does not put food on my tape like <laughs> but, uh, singing is not my number one you know like instrument or whatever it's uh, you're you're yeah. saying that you 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 like you're a musician more than a singer like that yeah kind of thing. so here's my point like i was telling i was telling her that like i can hear the three cent difference you know between uh between these two notes and stuff and she's kind of like well if you can if you have relative pitch or whatever where like i can i know when something's in two like how come you don't know when you're in two when you're singing like, <laughs> first off ouch <laughs> like ouch uh second of all it's weird because i was trying to explain to her like when when you speak it sounds different in your head than like mm-hmm. than what actually comes out. Mm-hmm. So I tell her, you know, 
in my head it's in tune <laughs> or relatively because i have relative pitch i just have perfect pitch i have relative pitch relatively it's it's all right you know like <laughs> to my ukulele to me it's all right i hear it i hear it okay but you know that's, you know, you, you you do a video covering Phil Collins, and then people are gonna call call you out. I'm like, <laughs> well, like that. I feel like that's why when people first record themselves, they're yeah. like, "Oh, I sound so weird, right?" Yeah. Like, yeah, it's because yeah, the the way that it vibrates mm-hmm. the bone in your head, yeah. it sounds weird, but the way that your skull vibrates is yeah. different than the uh-huh. voice that you project. So yeah. I was like, I mean, I don't know if that's true, but that's just like the excuse that I gave her. <laughs> I was like, you know what? No, I'm not gonna let you talk to me like this. <laughs> I am a professional musician now. She's she's just like you're a little too, yeah. She's not afraid to call me out like uh, stuff. You were pitchy. <laughs> you're a little pitchy in that song. And I'm like, dude, I'm just I'm just playing around playing playing songs for her daughter. Like I'm not at Carnegie Hall or anything. She's like, yeah, but you could. She hears these false I don't, pitches. I don't want her to pick up on your bad habits. <laughs> <laughs> we are priming her to be a professional singer and she doesn't are, need to hear yeah. your wrong notes your subpar voice uh, I can't uh, I can't wait I'm for I'm just gonna play ukulele in the corner now <laughs> I can't wait for Elle to grow up and be like yeah. dad you're two cents flat come on yeah. shut, shut up shut up you're 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 two cents. <laughs> you're two cents flat. <laughs> no allowance for you. I would dock your pay. You're fifty cents yeah, flat. God, you're like two cents. Well, well, the you hear it different in your in your head and like. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no, dad, no, no. Uh-huh. Just, um, gonna... just daddy's trying his hardest. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> daddy's trying his best. Okay, sorry. Uh, next, <laughs> I just thought people would like that. <laughs> so before we move on, mm-hmm. Joel said, "Any recommendations on a tuner to measure sense on a uh, uke?" Ooh, um, yeah, cause, Peterson. Well, like most tuners are like mm-hmm. um, cheaper tuners are like yeah. tuners from ten yeah. to twenty dollars. Yeah, well, what if you want to go like point zero zero five cents in tune or whatever yeah. the heck it is? Yeah, but like uh, <laughs> like the or like the clip-on tuners that mm-hmm. you'll find, they don't really tell you. Yeah, because it says plus five or yeah. whatever. Yeah, you know, like right It'll... right there. Yeah, I guess what is this? The, I'm looking at a snark tuner right yeah, now. Yeah, they have a plus five, and it, it has... should be like right before the. I guess the, it the red. Yeah, yeah. you wanna so. Is that a five? Yeah, that's five, five cents. Okay. All the way there is five cents. So three cents would be right there. And that's kind of high already. So maybe yeah. one and a half cent, like, is, is what my tolerance would be. Because so, seeing this well, now and going five cents, that's a lot. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I mean, as long as it's close to green. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty, close to green. Pretty close. You have to clip it on. So I'm with, I'm with green. Oh. Yeah. Oh, the, uh, the snark tuners. This, there, there, the snark there, there, there. tuners, um, when you're really close to the actual note, it turns green. And if you're not, it's red. So, yeah. And uh, all the way here, so all the way across, that would be five cents off. So if my G was this much off, that'd be about a cent. This would be about two cents. One glare. There. It's about two cents. That's already kind of like, oh. Yeah. Oh, and which is not yeah. bad, though. Which it's not bad. Not... It depends on your ear. Yeah. Yeah. You can hear it, but it's not. So, one more notch. That'll be three cents. Yeah, that's, that's obviously. Pretty... Yeah. Three, I guess, would be your. Three. Power. Yeah. That's kind of what oh. we said, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Like five three, is a lot. three would be unacceptable. <laughs> I didn't if realize was, how much five would. Or like right on the right on mm-hmm. the edge of unacceptable, but not too bad. Mm-hmm. Not unplayable, mm-hmm. you know, especially if you're playing with other ukulele players, and mm-hmm. it kind of drowns everybody. <laughs> kind of like drowns each other out. But um. Yeah. So if you're like in a in an ukulele club and stuff. Yeah, but if you're playing solo friends. on stage, three might yeah. be pushing it. Yeah, for the audience. That's true. Know? If if you have like if it's two cents off and something, you're just kind of strumming anyway. Um, like what Kai was saying, you know, like uh, relative to the other like strings, it mm-hmm. might just might not even might, hear the yeah, difference. Might not be too but if you're you know if you're playing stuff like while well, my guitar gently weeps or whatever, where you need that like, uh, like you need to hit that, and if this that 
that note right there is a little it's bit off. sharp. Yeah. Oh, it's like, it's like uh, when somebody like scratches the vinyl like for me, like oh. <laughs> yeah. And I have played that song like live, and my A string was like a little bit sharp, and like I just tr try not to hit it that loud. So I go. Just in case. That's what I do, yeah, just in case. Because I know I can hear him, like, oh my god, my A. Yeah. And then, like, some part of the song. Uh, mm. then I'll yeah, yeah, yeah. You go, do, a, do a quick. <laughs> I, I like when musicians tune. do that, right? Like, Or, like, you see a musician bend something. Yeah. And then, and they, then play, they play, and then they they <laughs> have to. Like, because you can just tell, like, they're like, oh no. <laughs> they bend it too much. I gotta. Okay. Now. Oh, back and back. <laughs> But it's like, it, you know, I've uh, I've kind of mastered my instrument. And this is like different from instrument to instrument, of course, to uh, to kind of know, um, you know, I'm not saying I'm an ukulele master in any sense, but I've mastered my instrument, like this particular one, uh, knowing that like this much will give me this much sharpness right? and this much like flat and stuff. Like I'll know, you know, if I just fix it one time, it'll, it should be fixed. And if I'm correct at my call, because sometimes, you know, it's like, Ah, oh, this sounds flat, and you're actually sharp, and then you go sharper. You're like, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. What the you made it worse. Way? Alan, <laughs> Alan was asking why was it that note in particular? Um, because the higher it is, the more it'll like it'll pierce. You know, like the mm -hmm. more it'll pierce. And through. you're and you're also playing open. Yeah, you're playing open, and you're um, you know, you're hitting this other B with it. So yeah, that has to be you know that has to be in tune. So when you're hearing that, it's gonna cut through, and in um, you. Uh, was it? Could you could you like detune your string and oh, then play like show like now. yeah just to show how much it stands out yeah. even worse so that's like maybe a scent so yeah yeah, yeah. like you'll hear it and that's the note that sticks the, out the, the, the notes clash if it's not in, yeah. in tune yeah. Yeah, any kind of like, um, yeah. like high pitch, like you know tones. That's because that's going to um, you know, cut through. Yeah, and yeah. because um, you're playing it along with yeah, yeah, open, a, open strings yeah. that are supposed to be in tune. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If it's like slightly off tune, yeah. then it's gonna. It's a very yeah. tough like. It's a very tough tune to like play. Well, play. play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the Japanese there. Yeah. Like play correctly. Yeah. And know? and Jake's arrangement of it kind of calls for yeah, for like a demanding to, to like, have to control over the yeah. instrument. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. Yeah, I would love to just do like song breakdowns and stuff. Like this is what he's doing here. See that? Yeah. That's genius. <laughs> like that. Why 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 didn't we come up with that? <laughs> I would love to just I think the you whole thing would be like, oh my god, listen to this part. His brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you hear that? Do you hear that? <laughs> Do you hear this this part? That I think that whole episode would just be that. <laughs> like, uh, oh, my, oh my god. Reaction video. <laughs> <Yeah>, reaction video. <laughs> that should he has a new album out. We should have like we a reaction, have, yeah. Reaction yeah. party. <laughs> reaction party. You, one of the songs on his <laughs> new album is Hello Yuga. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted to like comment on his video like, <laughs> nice try. We did it first. Because <laughs> I think his video. <laughs> Don D did it. Don D did it. Don did it. Because it came out, the video came out on the 20, like, 8th or something mm. or 27th. And then like our video came out on the first, right? Oh. So I was like, uh, <laughs> just let it in. I think just Hallelujah done. was was in a uh, was in an earlier album. I, I'm pretty mm. sure he released it maybe years before us. Like <laughs> I I've heard him play that song before. I, like I wanted to say that, but I knew like <laughs> people would not understand and they'd just be like, Whoa, what are you saying? Are you like saying? uh um, I just wanted to make it as a joke. Like yeah. like Mim guys, you know, like when they're watching Jake or like or James Hill play, like Mim and Mike will like go to each other like meh. <laughs> Yeah. And then, like, and then people yeah. will hear it. They're like, "What are you talking about? He's such a genius!" I <laughs> they're kind of joking. Yeah. yeah, they're just kind of joking yeah. around. I I do that a lot when <laughs> you're <me>. playing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I like I like when people are like, "Oh no, he's like he's great." And <laughs> Mim is just starts like laughing. And then, like afterwards, like when you come and you're like, "Okay, are you ready to go work, guy?" And then they're like. Oh, oh okay. he's kidding. Oh, this oh, you know each I, other. I thought okay. he actually thought he was terrible because that's what I heard from his <laughs> wife. <laughs> yeah. Heard from his wife, he's a little pitchy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um next next. Yeah. Uh we we have a couple questions in the chat. Okay. 
but there's a question that we got before the uh, before the live lesson and i really want to get it to it okay so if we don't get to questions in the chat we'll save it maybe for next week or the okay weekend. and uh we can just see how fast we can do some of these questions because i know we've yeah. had lengthy discussions and stuff but yeah and we started late too yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah hit me so uh d kind of like she she was uh sending me like she's having problems with holding cords okay and she thinks that she's holding them down too much okay and it causes a note and I was kind of saying, or like, not a note, uh, it causes noise mm -hmm. to sound. And I was kind of telling her that that's usually not the case. And it's mm -hmm. usually how you're holding it that's yeah. causing some unwanted noise if you're doing that. Mm -hmm. So I think what she's having, she sent a video. And I think what she's having problems with is she might be holding it too close to the wire or too close mm -hmm. to the, the nut. Yeah, I believe you know? we've had that question, but not from D, like from, yeah. from someone else. Like we've had that same exact question of like when I do chord switches or whatever, it makes all this noise. And um, yeah, a lot of it, uh, I think that guy's problem was uh, he was playing a little bit too close to the fret wire. Because if you're playing too close to the fret wire, you know, that's where um, that's basically where the, the, the string is being, you know, is being held down is right is right there. You know, you're holding it down from here, but the ukulele recognizes it as right there. You know, that you're playing that fret or this fret wire. Okay? So if you go a little bit closer to that, because you're making contact with it, when you uh, when you take off your finger, you're going to hear that noise. You know? Oh, am I plugged in? Let me plug in. So here we go. So you can kind of hear it. So if I play my G, you know, you hear that. You'll hear well, like, that noise. I, I, think it's, I think it's not even like with pull-offs or anything. I mm -hmm. think it's just when just she's taking it off. Yeah, her... even if I just kind of take it off. Or like just holding it, and when she's strumming, she's hearing noise. And I think it might be just because she's mm -hmm. holding it like on the wire, or mm -hmm. she's holding it. Well, I mean, describe the noise. Like, what kind of you know, kind of uh, are we talking like bad noise or just like an undertone, an overtone? She said, "Let me see if I can." My fingers. I pressed down. My fingers too hard on the string, and it makes a dink sound. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, uh, I kind of have to. Uh, yeah, I, I told her like yeah. she uh, said she's tried to send a video, yeah, and then she couldn't and stuff. Uh, she she did. She, she got did. one in at the last second. Okay, but she, I wanted to check it out. She wasn't really holding down chords, kind of, mm -hmm. or she kind of, mm -hmm. and she was. I I told her if she wants to find mm -hmm. the right amount of pressure, mm -hmm. uh, to like hold just a C chord and then mm -hmm. just like slowly apply pressure while you pick, right? And then yes. when you when you finally get like that clear note, that should let you indicate like okay, that's the mm -hmm. amount of pressure that I need to hold down mm -hmm. four strings like to make a note, you know. Right, and I mean we've we've mentioned it here before of like the right amount of pressure to you know put in your ukulele because you're you know you're holding it from different points, right? So one of the points that you're holding it is uh, the back of the ukulele against your chest like this and your forearm like up here. And what that does, you know, with those two points is it brings the ukulele naturally forward, right? If you're holding it that way. So now with your left hand, when you're doing chords, say like with, with let's do with the G chord because it's three fingers down. And um, the amount of pressure that you're applying to play that chord, so say I just made this shape, like the G shape, and just uh, put it on my ukulele. I'm not pressing down. It's just, it's just on top of the strings like this. See like the difference? So this is, and then this is down. So this is really loose. And then uh, just apply enough pressure to move your ukulele back like this. See how my thumb is back here? I'm not like, you know, um, pinching on the on the cord or anything like that. That's just enough pressure to bring the ukulele back here and prevent it from, uh, you know, from going forward. So that should be the amount of pressure that you put on your cord. And then play it. You should be able to hear, you know, the G chord ring out that way. Okay? So now you want to, you know, you want to make another point where you put your, you know, you put your thumb up here and this knuckle, I've uh, I mentioned this on Songs Made Easy, you know, this knuckle on the side like this so that, you know, it, um, you're not fully just depending on that G chord to hold your ukulele, you know, you, you have other, other points to keep your ukulele in place so that when you release that chord, you know, like it's not, it's not making any noise now like how we did before, right? And then now when you go to the, uh, to the F chord, you have a you know point of contact so that it's not like you know slingshotting uh, forward, and then you do this again, and then you use the same amount of pressure on the on the next chord, and the next chord, and the next chord. But you want to be able to pinpoint the amount of pressure that you're putting on it like this. 
But other than that, I'm going to have to see the other video. It's kind of hard to you know to give yeah. uh, to give an advice because I'm I don't want to give the wrong advice. So uh, my suggestions either I check out that that video. Um, depending on you know on how much I can see, I might be able to answer your question. If I still can't. Um, Thursdays, she's, you know, one on one coaching. She says she's gonna try and make it to one on one. Okay, so. yeah, one on one coaching would be great. Um, private lessons also you can sign up for. Uh, that would be even better if you're, you know, kind of self conscious about other people seeing you and stuff. Private lessons is going to be the better choice. I think. Could you try and like apply like extra pressure when you're holding it down and show? You like, can. Or like, or could you, you demonstrate oh, oh. like? Cause, okay, so like here, then see like if you know my my fingers will like you know they will hurt like you can you can't really see yeah, the difference but. Could you try playing with that though? Like, it, yeah, try to recreate what she's saying. It won't like playing. make noise oh, just yeah. by holding down extra yeah, hard, extra right? Extra hard. That's... So it's it's gonna have to be if you're you know touching the the fret wire like this. Mm -hmm. See, like on the uh, on my A string, instead of putting it down here in the middle like this, where it should be, you know. So it should. I know it looks like it from from the side that I'm touching the fret wire, but it's actually not because if you look at it from this angle, it's not touching the fret wire. And it's not touching the fret wire on this side either. Okay, so it's kind of like right there in the middle. So because right there in the middle, I'm going to uh, turn like this because uh, said said it in a song's made easy. You want to like swing your wrist around. So I'm taking this finger that's on the second fret, just my wrist around like this. And I've mentioned it here before. Even if you touch the back one, you should still be kind of fine. You know, mm -hmm. if you're not like as long as you're not on it like this. But if you just touch it in the back, <clears throat> it should be okay. But it's the front that. Right there, you can already kind of like. It's almost so if like you're a hearing that noise, kind of noise, then that's what it is. If that's the noise that you're talking about, but like I said, I need to hear what that noise is, and I can kind of <clears throat> make yeah. a diagnosis from that. So it's yeah. probably most likely finger placement instead of mm -hmm. pressure, mm -hmm. finger mm -hmm. pressure. Yeah. So those are just things that you know I would check up on. That, right? but like you, that is good though that you don't mm -hmm. want too much pressure yeah, yeah, yeah because that's just straining your hand yeah and unnecessarily yeah yeah, yeah okay. that's something that you should be aware of mm -hmm, as well mm -hmm. yeah but probably not contributing to a weird Whatever. noise yeah but it's just good just to check it off your list you know that that's not mm -hmm. it all right so next uh the two questions that you said you had let's see if we can bang them out here there's one me, sorry it was kind of long ago uh, Rob said, I just participated in a workshop performance with Andrew Molina. Mm -hmm. He uses his index finger and nail like mm -hmm. a pick to do tremolos. What do you think? Mm -hmm. um, it's good for those people that can. You know, like it's it was the original um, like style back then like with uh, with it with Troy Fernandez, that kind of style. But I believe that like, I, I don't know if I'm revealing too much, but I think he like he was playing and we just had a conversation about it. I think like he showed me like he like you're right and like it broke, Wait, like, broke his name Andrew? Andrew Molina like, oh really because he came down to Kauai and we were just kind of talking and stuff uh -huh. like oh you uh, I was like you play with your pointer finger like that he's like oh I haven't had any problems with it and stuff yeah and I believe it was him but like the, I think a week later he's like remember we were just talking about that my nail broke or whatever uh -huh. so I was like oh I think you know like Kalei gets uh you know gets a gel on his like on you know on his thumb i was like what if you just get a gel on your corner finger if that's kind of style that you do maybe you can you know do that but uh when you do the strums it'll kind of go on your um it'll make noise on your ukulele but you you'll have it you know kind of uh kind of okay <clears throat> so it's it's a sense of style you know if uh if that's your style that's your go-to style that works for you that's great um my uh my thing with uh you know with, with the pointer finger style is uh, because I'm very strum heavy, and it's exactly that when I'm doing my strums, and if I have that long corner finger nail, you're gonna hear a lot of those scratches on my, um, you know, on my uh, on my fretboard. So that's you know that's some unwanted noises that that you know that I don't want. Plus, thumb is uh, always going to be thicker than you know than that corner finger nail. So if you do um, you know if you do your your picking like this, you're gonna get you know uh, a thinner sound. Uh, in Andrew's case. He's kind of got it down where like it doesn't sound that that thin, but that's just his you know like his own personality and skills that you know that got uh you know that he's putting towards that attack. But for the most part, that attack is going to be thin, yeah. But you got anomalies like Andrew, you know that well, like, will make it sound decent. I think for those types mm -hmm. of things, like you can kind of overcompensate by yeah. doing it a little bit differently yeah, yeah, or yeah, figuring yeah. out how to do yeah. it. So. Yeah. But you know, um, it, 
to each his own is kind of you know is, is what I see because it works for him. It's doing you know doing really good. I don't. I'm not gonna say that it was him, but I want to say that I believe it was you know it was him. But somebody I was talking to about like using their nail and then like a week or two later like broke it and I'm like uh... see see what I just see what I told you you know like it was it's either him or. Uh... Okay, I don't want to drag anybody else down, <laughs> drag anybody else down, but yeah, it uh, was definitely Andrew. <laughs> he was definitely <laughs> Andrew. Believe it. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it, it's 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 a style choice, really. You know, that's um, that style was prominent before um, the uh, the thumb picking style that was brought by like uh, that was popularized by um, the Roy Sukuma school and Jake and stuff. And that's did um, well, only Otasan, I guess, did like thumb. Oh, Otosan yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. He's always. I, uh, so did cool. did um, did Troy Fernandez use finger picks or was it his nail? His nail. It was his, his nail. nail. It was like thick. I remember like shaking his hand before he said, "No, I can't sign your ukulele." <laughs> <laughs> but but, um, <laughs> but he was he day. was influenced by Peter Moon, who mm. did use yeah finger. Uh, picks? No, he used a thumb pick. So a Peter thumb, Moon, thumb yeah. pick. Yeah, I remember seeing a PBS special with him, Kelly Boy, and. Uh, and Jake, and mm-hmm. he was using a thumb pick. A thumb pick yeah. to do like that, those kind of tremolos and stuff. Yeah, or, or just but... to pick in general, I think. Yeah, it was kind of like that yeah. finger picking, mm-hmm. uh, slacky style, yeah. right? That yeah. I think using your your. But I wonder what he used for tremolos. If, if that was the yeah, thing, I don't know, you know if he did like tremolos. Mm-hmm. Know? I don't know if that was his that was his thing because like looking back, you know, and uh, trying to think of like the Sunday Manoa like albums and stuff. I don't think there was a tremolo that was kind of featured. There was like definitely fast picking, but you can do those fast pickings without yeah. doing tremolo. Yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> it kind of does look like he has finger Long picks pick. on yeah. on thumb and pointer. The pointer? Hmm. Maybe. Or like an know. Alaskan pick or something? Um well they they make like those mm. those other like you know how mm. steel string guitar players use mm-hmm. finger picks. Was, I'm not sure though. It's the yeah. the photos are kind of grainy. Mm. Yeah. Okay, what were you saying? What were you saying, Kai? Oh, I I just think that the like using your index finger to do tremolos mm. is reminds me more of like how a guitarist would do a tremolo with yeah. a regular pick. <clears throat> with a regular pick, where it's mm. just like I don't know. It it's just a little bit different in. Yeah the way that you move your wrist you know? yeah i mean that's that was uh because that was a popular style back then that was also my style like back you know back then like to use your pointer finger to pick and all that stuff and it's it still works for some people and i know troy still uses his uh pointer finger he's um and he's going strong with that but i i believe his pointer finger nail is fake though like he, he uses a fake acrylic nail and uh-huh. last time i saw him anyway yeah yeah, yeah it, it, it i mean even with nylon strings mm-hmm. Uh, if you're playing regularly mm. for long stretches of time, it mm. probably your natural nail probably won't stand up. To <clears throat> yeah, with that really, much abuse, really aggressive yeah. playing. Yeah, and if you listen to like Troy's playing, I'm not saying that it's bad. I don't want Troy Fernandez to come at me like I'm just saying what I play. <laughs> but you can <laughs> you can hear the um you know the the brightness and the clackety clack you know like of the. Uh, of his, uh, you, of yeah. His fake so you nail. can kind of, yeah. you kind of tell. Yeah, if you watch some like the is. the newer clips and stuff of of him on on YouTube or whatever him playing, you can hear like whenever he does the you know like the other uh, rolls and stuff, you uh-huh. can hear that like kind of clackety uh, sound of like a fake nail. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to know anybody coming after me, but <laughs> Troy, we're friends, right? <laughs> what Love you, Troy. <laughs> <laughs> was that was that intentional? The clackety no. clack, like from Louise when she got the fake nail. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Maybe, clack, 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 clack. <laughs> maybe some, uh, you know, Bob's Burgers. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So you know, let's uh, last one. Okay, yeah. uh, Rob asks because we relate. So besides the possibility of mm-hmm. buzzing, are there other issues if a uke's action is too low? Uh, can action that is too low actually make it more difficult to play your uke? Um, yeah, if it's, you know, if it's too low, then, uh, you know, not just the buzzing, but sometimes you can't get the note out because if it's, if it's too low, it might be touching the other, you know, the other, uh, fret wires. So if it's touching oh, the other fret wires. For, for people who don't know what you know, action oh, yeah. refers so action to. Action is, uh, the, the space between the fretboard and your, and your string. So you can lower the action, which, you know, closes, closes the, uh, the gap between that. And that makes it a little bit easier to play because you don't have to press down as hard. But you know, at the same token, if you're you know if you're a little too close, um, because this in order for the string to make a sound, it has to vibrate, right? It has to vibrate rapidly. 
And if it's vibrating and it's touching the uh, you know the fret wires, that might cause it to not vibrate as much as what I'm you know what I'm seeing. So you might be muffling out some of your you know some of your notes. You're definitely not gonna get the same volume as you would if it's you know if it's too uh you know if it's too low, mm -hmm. and you're gonna get a very um dead sounding you know uh, dead sounding instrument because it's so low it restricts the um you know the the vibration so you're, it's gonna sound like like a, like dead strings basically so there are like cons like to to having low super low action but you want to find that sweet spot for yourself that's a that's another thing too mm -hmm. like if i mean i i i can't imagine this happening but if you take your instrument to like a luthier you're like, I want to lower my action, and they lower it, yeah. and then they, ju they just hand it back to you, and they're like, here you go. Yeah. You might find intonation problems with that, <laughs> oh, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, like, just changing action, mm. like, that's why I said I can't mm. imagine, like, a professional or somebody who's good at it yeah. doing that, because if they adjust it, they'll probably be like, I will set up your uke, too, or <laughs> I, will, I will take care of the rest, but I don't know. I mean, if... If that's what you're gonna do, or that's what you're thinking mm -hmm. about doing, just make sure, like, or maybe ask, like, "Oh, can you also set up my uke too, or mm -hmm. can you make sure everything yeah. is good too?" Um, my first experience with uh, with with doing action and stuff, I was playing on um, you know, on my on my ovation. Actually, it's right, it's right over there. That's what I'm pointing at my uh, my my ovation ukulele or applause ukulele. I have a tenor applause, and I was changing strings one day, and um. The uh the saddle that this just came out. It's a pretty wide saddle. You want to grab it for me, Eric? So that was you. And this is a relic because my first. I've I've had two of these, and this is my first one. <laughs> so this applause you pull out. You see all the dirt. It's gross looking. <laughs> so you know it's it's a pretty wide um uh saddle. wide saddle. You know, and it's pretty cool because it's compensated. It's like a compensated mm -hmm. saddle on this thing. Um, this came off. Okay, but. This black part kind of stayed there, so it's like, oh, that's that's weird. And I found other like white things underneath that, so it's just little tiny strips, which is cool. So you, if you take off the top part, you can take off as much strips as you want to lower the action, or or you can add strips in there. You know, I'm sure to raise the action as well. So it's mm -hmm. pretty cool, and I'm like, wow, I can like, you know, I can control. I didn't even know that it was called action back then. I'm like, wow, my my uke feels so much better now. <laughs> And then until it was like Keen Bot once again, you know, like that he's like, oh, I like the action on your uke. Like, what'd you do to it? I was like, yeah, but you gets a lot of action. <laughs> like, you know, I, I practice all the time. It's like, like it's, what do you mean lower action? I I, I put a pretty high amount of action on, you know, on this thing. But I watch a ton of movies with my, <laughs> my uke. Like all the, the all Arnold Schwarzenegger the action. movies. All and, the action. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like it was, you know, it was him that kind of explained to me like, oh, you know, you lower the, uh, the 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 action, so it feels better, like on your you know on your uh, on your fingers when you fret the ukulele. Um, and, he, and I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it. <laughs> and then you're like, the next conversation you have, like, oh, why don't you check out the action on my uke? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's it's actually pretty cool. Like I would, you know, um, I don't know why more people don't do that because it's just like a. Like little strips that you can, oh, like, they it's, can take off. It's because well, if if you have an under saddle pickup, uh -huh. it will not, it will affect how well it. That's true. Picks up. Yeah, the more if, if you add more mm -hmm. shims, then it'll mm -hmm. yeah, and then it also doesn't conduct the vibration from mm -hmm. your strings to your top as yeah. well. If there's other types of material in between mm -hmm. your saddle and the, I'm starting yeah. to think that this black part is part of the um uh, the the pickup. You know, like this. This whole black thing yeah. is a part of the pickup. Yeah, so, so like with the with you insert it into that, you know, into that like kind of slot, and whatever's inserted in that slot gets picked up by the. Uh, yeah. The so with pickup. this one is like amazing. it doesn't um doesn't play well acoustically anyway, no. so it shouldn't affect. It sounds so yeah, they don't they don't really care about it affecting mm. how it sounds. That's cool though. Yeah, I I was like, oh, I can just take this off if it's too low, then I can just put one back in, and it's not like well regular saddles like with this one. You're gonna have to like sand it off, you know. Like you're gonna have to uh, sand it down, like underneath on the bottom. Yeah, but you can you know. also add like shims underneath to. That's true. Raise yeah, the yeah. Paper, yeah. paper shims. Um, and that that happens a lot too when mm -hmm. when. But then if you put paper, your uh, that that also compromises the tone of your. Uh, yeah, that's exactly off, yeah. what. Yeah. Uh, you know. But it's it's made same. from the same material. Yeah. Like, so it's kind of. But it's, still, it's if cool. it's not connected, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. when yeah. it's separate. Yeah, when when I worked at a, a music shop, that's what we would do sometimes is mm -hmm. just like add like a shim, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. just to yeah. make sure that it's like oh it mm-hmm. sounds okay or sounds yeah. and better. that's and, cool right yeah but yeah that was my first like kind of exploration i was like in high school like when i you know when i did that that just... seems like that seems like a similar mm-hmm. idea to the tuna yuke <laughs> where it's like oh, oh, you can, like, adjust, you can adjust. adjust on the fly <laughs> and then like anybody who plays ukulele though is like mm, i do mm, not want not to gonna, do that yeah don't i don't want to touch that <laughs> i don't want to yeah. touch that yeah but yeah, actually so in cool. in um instrument yeah. building the volume that you'll get out of it is kind of you know it has to do with how thin the top is mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and how it's braced but yeah. the volume um or like the transference of your mm-hmm. vibration from your mm-hmm. strings to the top of your mm. uh, instrument, I guess, is a function of the saddle width and height. Mm, yeah, so yeah. the the higher that it is and the thinner that it is, mm. the more volume you'll, you'll mm. end up getting. So uh, an ukulele with high action might have more volume and, and yeah. with a low action, mm. it'll probably have less volume. Less, yeah. um, but there are material kind of mm-hmm. limits to how yeah. tall, <laughs> tall... <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, and, you know, with that yeah. said, I think we should uh, we should end because yep. we have about three minutes until the next <laughs> show happens. Uh, too bad we couldn't get to this awesome little metronome that I yeah, just you next know, time. Just got well, the Mike next will time. be here, so yeah, we so can talk about that. He'll test me on my metronome skills. <laughs> but yeah, thanks guys so much for um, for watching. Once again, you can download this on iTunes or wherever you get your uh, favorite podcasts at. And if you want to watch this as a video, uh, head over to ukulelonthegroundcom Sign up for UE+. Stick around for Songs Made Easy and stick around after that for one-on-one coaching. But keep it locked here at ukulelonthegroundcom On behalf of myself, Aaron, and Kahai, we'll see you next time. Aloha.